Part three, chapter fourteen of a vital question, or what is to be done by Nikolai Chernyshevsky, translated by Nathan Haskell Dole, eighteen fifty two to nineteen thirty five, and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part three, marriage and second love, chapter fourteen on the next day early in the morning nastenka came to vi'ra pavlovna i want to tell you about what you saw yesterday vi'ra pavlovna she said but for some time she was at a loss how to go on i would not want you to think ill of him vi'ra pavlovna what do you mean you must have a poor opinion of me nastasya borisovna no if it were someone else besides me i should not have thought of such a thing but you know i am not like other girls no nastasya borisovna you have no right to speak about yourself in such a way we have known you for a year and before that a good many of our union knew you this proves that you do not know anything about me how so i know a good deal about you you have been a servant girl the last time you were with the actress n after she got married you left her so as to avoid her father-in-law you entered wise shop and from there you came to us i know all the particulars about it of course i know that maksimova and shena who know all about me would not tell anything to anybody but after all i thought that you and the others might have heard about me ah how glad i am they yonder don't know anything about it and i am going to tell you so that you may know what a good man he is i have been a very bad girl vi'ra pavlovna you nastasya borisovna yes vi'ra pavlovna i have i have been a very bold girl i had not the slightest shame and i used to be always drunk and that's the reason that i am ill vi'ra pavlovna because with my weak lungs i used to drink too much this was the third case of the kind that had come under vi'ra pavlovna's observation these girls who had behaved themselves with perfect propriety since their acquaintance with her told her that hitherto they had been leading bad lives the first time she was amazed at such a confession but after reasoning it over for several days she asked herself how about my own life the filth in which i grew up was also very bad however it did not stick to me and there are probably thousands of women who have grown up in purity in families worse than mine is there anything strange in the fact that those whom a happy chance has brought out from such degradation are not ruined she listened to the second confession and was not surprised because the girl who made it had kept intact all the noble peculiarities of a human being generosity capability for genuine service and softness of heart had even preserved a great part of her innocence nastasya borisovna i have heard such confessions as you want to make and it was hard for both of us for her who spoke and for me who listened i shall respect you not less but rather more than before when now i know that you have endured a great deal but i understand the whole story without listening let us not speak about it there is no need for you to confess before me i myself have spent many years in great sorrows i am trying not to think about them and i don't like others to speak about them it's too hard no vi'ra pavlovna i have a different feeling about it i want to tell you what a good man he is i want someone to know how grateful i am to him and whom can i tell it to if not to you what kind of a life i led of course there is no need of speaking about that it was of the same stamp as that of all such poor creatures i only want to tell you how i became acquainted with him it is so pleasant for me to talk about him and besides i am going to live in his house and you must know why i am going to leave the shop if telling this story will give you any pleasure anastasia borisovna i will gladly listen let me get my work first yes but it is impossible for me to work how kind these girls have been to let me have such work as agreed with my health i shall be grateful to them all to each one tell them vi'ra pavlovna that i asked you to thank them for me i was walking on the nevsky vi'ra pavlovna it was rather early when i went out a student was walking along and i accosted him he did not reply but crosses to the other side of the street then he sees that i am following him i grasped him by the arm no said i i am not going to let you go you are such a handsome little fellow but i beg of you to let go of me he says no come along with me i do not care to well then i will go with you where are you going i shall not leave you on any account 
I was such a shameless girl, much worse than anybody else. Perhaps from the very reason, Anastasia Borisovna, that you were at heart more modest, more conscientious. Yes, it may be so. At least I have seen this in others, not at that time, of course, but afterwards I understood it. When I told him that I was going with him at all events, he laughed and said, if you want to, come along, but it will be useless. He wanted to teach me a lesson, as he told me afterwards. It was disagreeable to him to have me clinging to him. And so I went along, and I told him all sorts of absurdities, but he kept silent. And so we went to his rooms. For a student, he lived then very comfortably. He used to get from his pupils about twenty roubles a month, and he lived all by himself. I stretched out on his sofa and said, Nu, no, where is your wine? No, says he, I shall give you no wine, but you can have tea if you want. With whiskey, I said. No, without whiskey. I began to do all sorts of foolish things, to be utterly shameless. He sat down and looked at me, but he did not show any interest, so offensive was it to him. Nowadays you can find such young men, Vera Pavlovna. Since that time young men have been growing morally better, but then it was a very rare thing. I began to get angry, and I scolded him. Since you are such a stick, I said, so I am going. What is the use of going now? You may as well have some tea. My landlady will bring the samovar right in, but don't abuse me. And all the time he addressed me formally. He said, you had better tell me who you are and how you came to do such things. I began to tell him everything that came into my mind. We make up stories to suit ourselves, and that's the reason no one ever believes us. But there are some, in spite of all that, whose stories are not made up. There are among us well-born and well-educated girls. He listened and said, no, you have made up your story poorly. I should like to believe it, but it is impossible. At this time we were drinking tea. And then he said, do you know, your constitution makes it bad for you to drink. Your lungs are already very much injured by it let me examine you well vira pavlovna you won't believe me but i assure you that i felt ashamed and yet what was my life and how shamefully i had been behaving just a few minutes before and he noticed it don't be disturbed he says i only want to examine your lungs he was then only in the second class but he knew a great deal about medicine he was away ahead in science he examined my chest no says he you must not drink at all you have very weak lungs. How can we help drinking, I asked. We cannot get along without it. And it is really impossible, Vera Pavlovna. Then you must give up the life that you are leading. Why should I give it up? It's such a gay life. No, says he, there's very little gaiety in it. No, says he, I am very busy now, and you had better leave me. And I left him, feeling very angry, because I had wasted my evening and I felt very much offended because he was such a passionless fellow, because we have our ambition in such matters, you know. And then in a month it occurred to me to go to the same place again. Come on, says I, I'll go and see that stick again. I'll see if I can't wake him up. This was just before dinner. I had gone to bed the previous night, and I had not been drinking. He was sitting with a book. Hello, old stick, says I. How do you do? What do you want? Then I began again to do ridiculous things i shall put you out he says stop i told you that i did not like it you are not drunk now and you can understand and you had better heed what i say your face shows that you are sicker than you were before you must give up wine just fix your dress and we will have a little talk well the fact was that my chest had already begun to pain me he examined me again he said that my lungs were in a worse state than before he had a great deal to say yes and my chest did pain me and so I began to get sentimental, and I burst into tears. I did not want to die, and he was all the time threatening me with consumption. And I say, how can I give up my mode of life? My Kozyaika will not let me go. I owe her seventeen silver roubles. We were always kept in debt, you know, so that we could not have any voice in the matter. Nu, says he, I have no seventeen silver roubles with me, but you come and see me day after tomorrow that seemed so strange because i did not mean to give him any hint and how could i have expected it i did not believe my ears and i wept still more violently for i thought he was making fun of me it is a sin and a shame to insult a poor girl when you see that she is weeping and i did not believe him for a long time until at last i saw that he was in earnest and what do you think 
he raised the money and gave it to me two days later and even then i somehow did not believe it how is it you do this when you do not want to take any favors from me i said i paid off my kozyaika and rented a separate room but i had nothing to do and i had no money and so i went on living as before that is not exactly as before what an improvement it was vira pavlovna i used to receive only my acquaintances my good friends those who did not offend me and i had no wine either and therefore what an improvement and do you know how easy it was for me in comparison with what it had been before no after all it was hard and i want to tell you this you know me am i not a modest girl whoever hears anything bad of me now and here in the shop how much care i take of the children and they all love me and those old women cannot say that i am teaching them anything bad and so i lived in this way three months or so went by and during this time i took good care of myself because my life was peaceful and though i was ashamed on account of the money i did not look upon myself as a bad girl only at that time sashenka used to come to see me and sometimes i used to go and see him and now i am coming to speak of the subject that i wanted to tell you about he did not come to see me as the others did but he looked after me to see that i did not return to my former weakness or get to drinking wine and really the first days he helped me because i had a strong inclination for wine and i was ashamed on his account supposing he should come in and see that i was drinking and possibly if it had not been for that i should not have resisted because my friends very good young fellows used to say i am going to send out for wine but as i was ashamed on his account i used to say no it must not be but otherwise i should have been tempted the mere thought that wine was bad for me would not have been enough and then in three weeks or so i grew stronger my craving for wine passed and i got out of the habit of drinking and i kept laying up money to pay him back and in two months i paid him up how glad he was that i returned him the money the day after he brought me some muslin for a dress and some other things that he bought with that money he used to come to see me after that just as a doctor calls to take care of an invalid and a month after i had paid off my debt he was sitting in my room and said now nastenka i begin to like your looks and really it's true wine spoils the complexion and its effects don't pass off suddenly but by this time they had passed and the complexion of my face had become more delicate and my eyes were clearer and then again as i had got out of my former habits i began to speak modestly for you know my thoughts after i gave up drinking became modest though i used to get entangled in my speech and sometimes i used to forget myself on account of my former carelessness but by this time i had got accustomed to behaving myself and to speaking more modestly and as soon as he said that i pleased him i was so happy that i wanted to throw myself on his neck but i did not dare and i refrained and he said you see nastenka i am not devoid of feelings and he declared that i had become a nice modest young girl and he caressed me and how did he caress me he took my hand and laid it on his and began to smooth it with his other hand and he looked at my hand and indeed at that time my hands were white and delicate and so when he took my hand you would not believe it i blushed after my life vira pavlovna as though i had been an innocent baruishna this is strange but it is so but with all my shame it is absurd to say vira pavlovna with all my shame it is true i still said how is it that you are willing to caress me alexander matveitch and he said it is because you are a virtuous girl now nastenka and the words virtuous girl that he called me affected me so much that i burst into tears and then he said what is the matter nastenka and he kissed me what do you think when he kissed me my head began to swim and i forgot all about the past is it possible to believe vira pavlovna that such a thing could happen to me after such a life as mine well on the next morning i was sitting and weeping and wondering what would become of me and how should i live poor creature that i was all that was left for me was to throw myself into the neva i felt that i could not live such a life as i had been living i might die i might starve to death but i could not live so any more you see that i had been in love with him long ago but as he had not shown any such feelings towards me i had no hope of ever winning his love 
and my love died away within me, and I did not even know that I had it. And now it was all brought to light again, and of course when you feel such a love, how can you look upon anybody else with favor except the man whom you love? You yourself know that this is impossible. There is nothing else in existence except the one man. Here I was sitting and weeping. What can I do now, being as I have nothing to live on? And I really made up my mind to go and see him once more, and then go and drown myself. And thus I spent the whole morning weeping. But suddenly I saw him coming in, and he began to kiss me, and he said, Nastenka, do you want to live at my house? And I told him how I felt, and so I went to live at his house. That was a happy time, Vera Pavlovna. I think that few have ever enjoyed such happiness. And he was always so kind to me. How many times it happened that I woke up and he was sitting with a book, and then he would come and look after me, and he would forget his book, and he would sit and keep watch over me. But what a modest man he was, Vera Pavlovna. I could understand it afterwards when I came to read and find out how love is described in novels. I could judge then but with all his modesty how he loved me and what a feeling you have when a beloved man loves you it is a happiness such as you can form no idea of let us imagine when he kissed me for the first time my head even turned i bowed before him such a feeling is sweet indeed but that was nothing in comparison to the feeling afterwards before the blood boils you know there is anxiety and even in the sweet feeling there is more or less torment so that it is even hard to bear it although it is hardly worth while to say how blessed it is because for such a minute you are ready to sacrifice your life and there are some who do sacrifice their lives vera pavlovna therefore it must be a great happiness but still it is not this not this at all it is just the same as when you get lost in daydreams sometimes when you are sitting alone and merely think ah how i love him and there is no worriment no anxiety at all in this pleasantness and you feel so calm so easy in mind so it is the same feeling only a thousandfold stronger when this beloved man loves you and how calm you feel and the heart does not throb no for that would mean disturbance and you feel nothing of that kind but it is much smoother and there is more pleasantness and it beats so gently and your chest expands and you breathe freer ah this is so this is true it is very easy to breathe eh how easy so that when an hour or two passes like one minute no not a minute not a second there is no time at all just as when you fall asleep and get up again if you fall asleep you know that much time has passed since you went asleep but how has the time passed it did not make up a single minute and then again it is the same thing as after you have been asleep there is no weariness but on the contrary freshness courage as though you had been resting and so it is you have been resting i said that it was very easy to breathe and that is the very truth what a strength in the glance vera pavlovna no caresses of friends can caress you in such a way or give you such a sense of luxury as his glance all the rest that is in love is not as comforting as this comfort and how he loved me how he loved me ah what a delight it was no one can imagine it except the one who has experienced it you know that vera pavlovna you know vera pavlovna that the look of even a woman makes me blush our girls will tell you how bashful i am it is for that reason that i live in a separate room and how strange it is you would scarcely believe it but you know all about it and i need not tell you but when you think about it you cannot part from this thought no i am going to leave you vera pavlovna there is nothing more for me to tell you I only wanted to tell you how good Sashenka is. End of part three, chapter fourteen. Recording by expatriate in Bangor, Maine.